This is Just Nigeria coming up today. Air travel safety and the COVID-19 pandemic. We assess the preparedness of aviation authorities in Nigeria to resume commercial flights. And creativity at its finest. Meet the visual artists using food to celebrate Africa's rich cultural heritage. Also, bridging the gap. The young doctor helping pregnant women during Kenya's coronavirus curfew. Plus, Hi, my name is Adewale Akenoye Agbaje. Check me out. The British Nigerian Hollywood actor and director providing a platform for African movie talents to thrive. Welcome to Just Nigeria from the BBC and Channels TV, where we bring you fresh perspectives on stories being liked, shared, and tweeted about by the social media generation. I am Wali Fakile. Our top story for this week. Now, it is still not clear when local flights will resume across Nigerian airports. The federal government suspended commercial flights in March to curb the spread of coronavirus in the country. Since then, there's been a delayed attempt to resume domestic flights with the latest postponement coming on the 21st of June. But how prepared are aviation authorities in Nigeria to restore commercial flights? And who bears the cost of keeping passengers safe? Uh, Just Nigeria's Ajoke Ulodse has been finding out. It's been six months since the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic in China. The death toll has surpassed 500,000 and there are concerns of a second wave. Life as we've known it is changing crossing borders from one nation to another. The virus has forced more countries to shut their air spaces. Today, COVID-19 has left the global aviation industry counting its losses. Before now, the aviation sector was huge. It delivered 2.7 trillion US dollars in global GDP contribution and employed about 24 million people across the world. In Nigeria, the industry's success has been significant. A 2017 report by the International Air Transport Association, IATA, valued the aviation sector contribution to Nigeria's GDP at $1.7 billion, with the industry supporting about 241,000 jobs. On the 23rd of March 2020, the Nigerian government shut its airspace to contain the spread of the virus. This decision was widely celebrated, but its impact has been deeply felt. The six-year-old Isaac Balami runs an aircraft maintenance and charter service. The lockdown has left him and many others groaning. Unfortunately, ever since this lockdown started, nobody has come to us to build aircraft tires or aircraft brakes. That, is a, that, that has negatively impacted on our inflow. Uh, most people that even pack aircraft with us, they struggle to pay. This struggle is a reality for some airline managers and owners, including Alan Oyema who runs one of Nigeria's private passenger and charter airlines. The airliner employs at least 3,000 people. He says the last four months have been quite tough. Well, over the last four months, we must have lost close to 30 billion in revenue, if not more. We must have lost about, about that. And at the same time, your, your costs are still mounting every other day. You have to pay vendors. Insurance is still there. We paid over $4 million this period of insurance on our fleet. And that's a lot. So, yet, no revenue is coming in. Oyema's reality is not peculiar to him. Obi Banozo is the chief operating officer of Dana Air. Increasing expenditure with zero revenue has left the organization struggling. The biggest challenge has actually been getting the, um, the support from our financial backers um, to spend on all these things. Luckily, with their support, we've managed to keep them and help people where we can if they need um, a little bit. We have to say we pay some, some people, but sometimes we can't pay full salaries when you're not looking here as well. This paucity of funds is one of the reasons Ayata wants 25 million jobs face the risk of disappearing with the continuous decline in demand for air travel. Two million of these job losses will come from Africa. Binga runs a travel agency and is an indirect beneficiary of the sector. He says nothing prepared him for the challenges the virus has caused his business. It's like business as usual, only that the inflows are not coming in. We are still paying for the internet, we are still paying for the staff, we are still paying for the rent, the lightning. 
even there is what is called redundant costs as well. Nigerian authorities earlier set June 21 for the resumption of domestic flights in five of the country's airports. That decision was reviewed and the suspension extended. On June 27, the country released fresh protocols for travel to be observed by passengers and airport users. We will have to figure out how we are going to stagger these departures and stagger these arrivals in such a way that we minimize the volume and the number of passengers that are getting into these uh, arrival and departure holes. With authorities paying attention to temperature screening and physical distancing at checking and boarding points, there are concerns that physical distancing on board airplanes may be near impossible. With the middle seat empty, we're only going to be running about 60% of capacity. And so, with the increase in passenger service charge, the middle seat empty, and with the recent, as you know, the position of Naira against the dollar. So those main things I'm saying are going to push towards getting, um, having fares increase. Between the eye seat and the window seat, it's not up to two meters. So what are we talking about? All we need to do is to look for avenues of minimizing the spread of this contact and making sure that it's not distributed through the airlines. And how do we do that? We devise the means. You don't need to leave the middle seat empty. But our airlines expected to keep passengers safe in order to curb the spread of the virus while also battling to keep their businesses profitable. You can only do so much with operations and technical issues. Financial decisions this time around will be key. They will drive the recovery, not operational conditions. Whether you call it bailout or intervention fund or whatever, or palliative, what I advocate is a situation whereby the federal government helps the airlines to take care of the workforce. Aviation is really a big driver of the economy and so it's crucial not to let any part of the, the, the system go down. With an already distressed industry and businesses struggling to keep their workforce, how willing is the government to aid this recovery? The owners of airlines and aircraft down to travel agents, down to ground handling, all to food vendors, and people doing businesses around our premises that have lost income. Government is uh, coming up very soon. We are finalizing with Ministry of Finance, Budget, National Planning, and the CBN. As Nigeria continues to deal with rising number of COVID-19 cases brought on by community transmission, the challenge of resuming flight comes with a burden. How do we prevent airports from becoming a vector in the spread of the global pandemic? Ajoke Hulotse, Just Nigeria.